we are going to discuss about what are the primary water quality criteria for various fresh water. See, uh, Central Pollution Control Board and Indian Standards have framed various categories in which uh, the dissolved oxygen, biological oxygen demand, coliforms, coliform is basically the living organisms, the kind of bacteria which are uh, sourced from the human waste or the animal waste, pH value, free ammonia and electrical conductivity, sodium absorption ratio and boron. These are eight categories, characteristics, parameters of water. Uh, based on the various concentrations of uh, these parameters, the quality of water has been categorized as A, B, C and D. So here, if you see the A category in which the dissolved oxygen should be uh, around 6 ppm or 6 milligrams per liter. So uh, biological oxygen demand should be 2 and total coliforms per 100 ml. In 100, m uh, 100 ml, there should be only 50 uh, living organisms, coliforms. Uh, there are fecal coliforms that are basically generated because of the human excreta, human waste. So that should be only about 50 and the pH value should be around 6.5 to 8.5 and other uh, pollutants like ammonia, electrical conductivity, they have been not mentioned. Uh, I guess uh, the free ammonia should not be uh, present in this uh, category. So here we see uh, like you have seen the values of dissolved oxygen are decreasing when we change from A, B, C, D and E. So uh, likewise biological oxygen demand is increasing. Uh, if you remember when I say that dissolved, when the dissolved oxygen in water increases or uh, when the dissolved oxygen in water decreases, biological oxygen demand increases because it is uh, due to the presence of organic pollutants. Similarly, in fecal coliforms, uh, when we uh, go from category A to E, the uh, fecal coliforms or total coliforms, they increase from 50 to 5000 or they get uh, outnumbered more than 5000 per 100 ml means this water is very highly polluted and we will see uh, for what uses we can brought in these category of waters in this uh, uh, under this uh, I mean in, in this table like a category this one which is having these kind of parameters can be source of drinking water without conventional treatment like when we drink water either we uh, get this water from the municipal supplies or we get uh, from the bottled water. So I'm not talking about the bottled water. I'm talking about the drinking water source, which we usually get from home or we, got, uh, we get uh, go outside in a place for outdoor, like uh, any excursion. So the drinking water should be of A category. So this uh, dissolved oxygen should be around six and other categories mentioned, uh, other parameters mentioned here. So this water uh, do not need to be having any treatment like if we use chlorine tablets for disinfections. So uh, this water can be used directly for drinking purpose. But as the, we change from category A to B, we cannot use this water for drinking purpose, only for bathing purpose, for washing purpose. Similarly, category C can be used only for drinking water when it is treated or it is uh, disinfection is done in the water like chlorine tablets or there is uh, some kind of uh, tertiary and primary treatments or secondary treatments. We will discuss in the last slides that what is that. So <clears throat> D category is fit only for the fishing and propagation of wildlife. Wildlife and fishery. Uh, like uh, pisci culture can be done in the category of D, only that. And E category is fit only for the irrigation and industrial cooling. You know, the industrial cooling, particularly in uh, energy generation, uh, national, uh, not national thermal power plants, the, uh, they need water for cooling uh, purpose. So this category of water can be used in there. And controlled disposal of, of waste means ke, uh, when we discharge over waste, uh, we can uh, discharge over waste in this category, like uh, treated waste having some uh, permissible limits 
we will also discuss that what is the permissible limit of various uh, discharges from industries for various categories so this is the criteria uh, quality of uh, various freshwater categories and it is a very important table you should remember this if you have been asked what is uh, what should be the total fecal uh, total coliform uh, uh, per 100 ml of uh, uh, total coliforms in category B, then you should be knowing that it is 500. You should remember this table. So I will also provide this presentation in uh, <clears throat> the WhatsApp and also in uh, the Google class. Now, how can we prevent the groundwater pollution? So uh, we should be uh, monitoring our aquifers. Aquifers is the from which we are drawing the water. Uh, like bore wells or open wells, we should monitor that regularly for various uh, water quality parameters like TDS, coliforms, and other uh, parameters. And uh, we should use less hazardous substances like we should go for the organic fertilizers, organic pesticides, like that. And we should uh, go for the leak detection. You see, uh, when we uh, dump our waste in uh, on site, in landfills, the leachates they enter into the groundwater, so we should detect that they have a complete kind of setup how that uh, should be done, um, and the strictly regulating hazardous waste disposal, the hazardous waste, particularly the solid waste, hospital waste, or the animal waste that should be dumped in an area where it could not find its way into the groundwater, and. Uh, also, storing the hazardous material like radioactive material or any kind of chemical, which it should be uh, stored above the ground, particularly in the areas where the groundwater level is very uh, deep. And uh, another uh, slide is also showing if all the, uh, the chemical, uh, how can we prevent the groundwater pollution and if it is only uh, it is already happening the groundwater pollution is happened so how can we clean that so first prevention is find a substitute of toxic chemicals which i have discussed in earlier slides keep toxic uh, chemical out of environment like uh, keep it above the ground in a style uh, monitoring wells near landfills there are monitoring wells where from we can uh, draw the leachates and uh, we can see what is the level of leachates has it been uh, uh, seepage uh, happened into the groundwater or not and require uh, leak detectors on underground water tanks there should be leak detectors if we store anything in underground and uh, ban hazardous waste disposal landfills and injection wells like injection wells, I have said you where we uh, bore a well kind of thing and we uh, inject some chemicals for the disposal. So these should be banned completely. Store harmful uh, liquids above the ground like chemicals and radioactive materials, they should be uh, stored above the ground. So if uh, the groundwater, uh, is, uh, groundwater pollution has already happened, then what should be done? So we should pump to the surface. The uh, groundwater and clean and return to the aquifers. There is, uh, uh, we can go for the <clears throat> groundwater treatment. We can withdraw the water and clean it by various processes and then inject it in, uh, back into the groundwater. But it is very costly because groundwater is, uh, uh, the, it is around 30% of uh, the fresh water uh, in uh, the groundwater. So it is very expensive. How can we draw, then uh, treat it, and then back inject it into that? It is very uh, costly. But uh, another method is inject microorganism to clean up uh, and contamination. There are some organisms which help in decontaminating or degrading certain chemicals. So we can inject those kind of uh, organisms. They uh, they have various methods. Uh, we can. Um, uh, uh, inject those kind of organisms into the uh, groundwater and they decontaminate and they are very less harmful chemicals but uh, this process is still expensive then pump nanoparticles of inorganic compounds to remove pollutants we pump uh, the nanoparticles nanotechnology is uh, advancing day by day uh, we can use the nanoparticles that make 
the uh, inorganic pollutants they make that uh, unavailable uh, in uh, the uh, i mean uh, they make different compounds uh, and those compounds are not harmful for the uh, for the drinking purpose so this technology is cheap and most effective in this method so these are some methods how can we prevent groundwater pollution and it or if it has already happened and how can we decrease or how can we clean up the so second category in this is uh, the ocean pollution ocean pollution what whatever uh, whatever we pollution we do on the surface or groundwater it ultimately finds its way to the oceans uh, like if we uh, dispose of our solid wastes into the water bodies like polythene food particles ultimately it finds its way into the oceans the biggest problem for the ocean pollution is uh, the microplastic and uh, the also the plastics which we use in day to day life and many of the marine birds or animals they uh, it has been found they uh, the plastic uh, finds the in way into their gastrointestinal tracts and they die because of the hunger because they cannot eat the plastic uh, cannot be digested by the animals uh, besides that uh, the oil supply from the particularly from the gulf countries it is supplied crude oil is supplied to other countries so uh, because of uh, the turbulence or some storms in the ocean these ships they uh, break down and they spill oil into the sea and this also cause the ocean pollution so oil uh, it forms a layer on the surface of water and uh, it reduces it reduces the light uh, or the penetration of light into the water and also the sea birds the oil sticks their feathers and they cannot fly they cannot catch and they get easily uh, they get vulnerable to various uh, diseases pests or uh, predators uh, and besides that the nuclear wastes uh, whatever nuclear waste is generated because of the nuclear power plants we have discussed in the natural resource chapter how a nuclear uh, resource uh, how a nuclear plant they generate a nuclear uh, waste and uh, it can be dumped uh, either in the land because land availability is very less so most of the countries they dump their nuclear waste into the oceans so if because of some uh, uh, natural or anthropogenic activities or like the tsunami or some war kind of thing uh, the uh, that uh, nuclear waste can find its way into the water and that also can pose uh, the threat to the diversity or ecosystem ocean ecosystem besides that whatever the pollutants they are coming from the surface water they also uh, find its entry into the oceans like we are using fertilizers we are using pesticides sewage water that all finds its way into the ocean so these are the sources of ocean pollution so how can we prevent the ocean pollution and how can we clean up first is the prevention we should reduce the input of toxic pollutants whatever activity we do we should be uh, using more environment friendly uh, things rather than using chemical or toxic and pollutants uh, separate sewage and storm line sewage and storm line is a uh, kind of thing uh, like storm water management and uh, sewage water management these are two different things sewage water is the wastewater which is generated from our homes like uh, or which is generated from the hotels or uh, restaurants uh, that contains basically the food particles or the waste from the latrine or bathroom and storm water is basically the rain water uh, which is uh, uh, which is collected uh, on the roads and uh, it finds its way to the drains so there is an overflow whenever there is a rain there is an overflow in the drains particularly in kashmir we find there is no separate storm water or sewage water both are combined so we should separate these two so that the management can be done separately storm water uh, can be used for the irrigation purpose by a small kind of treatments but sewage water needs a uh, particular setup which we call the wastewater treatment plant or sewage uh, treatment plant 
And uh, besides, we should prevent, uh, uh, we should ban the dumping of the wastes, uh, sewage wastes or solid waste into the coastal waters and uh, protect the uh, sensitive areas from development, oil drilling, because most of the oil drilling or uh, the mining also happens in oceans. So we should prevent those kind of activities. Regula regulate the coastal uh, development, recycle used oil, uh, uh, means there are various kinds of things. How can we uh, prevent the coastal water pollution? Uh, if in some uh, places, uh, because of certain activities like oil spills, the coastal water pollution is already happened, then what kind of activity we can do to reduce that pollutant? So improve oil spill cleanup capabilities. So there are various methods, physical, chemical methods. We can spread chemicals that can uh, degrade the chemicals, uh, not chemicals, that can degrade the oil. Uh, besides, we can use the microorganisms uh, that can eat that oil uh, which has spread on the water or coastal areas. So that kind of thing we can do. And uh, use of nanoparticles, again, in this kind of thing where the oils or CV spills, they can be... Uh, converted into the various products that are unharmed, that are non-harmful uh, to the uh, local biodiversity or organisms. Then uh, require at least secondary treatment uh, for coastal sewage. The sewage which is generated in coastal areas that also needs to be, that is not the coast, uh, it is not uh, like the coastal waters or the uh, ocean water is uh, not in, uh, impacted if we discharge the sewage that if a regular discharge of the sewage happens in the coastal water it definitely impacts uh, the uh, the ecosystem so we should at least do the treatment of the sewage water before uh, letting it out into the coastal areas and uh, most importantly use of wetlands so so that aquatic or other methods of treatment. there are some methods of wetlands wetlands are some water bodies uh, basically uh, which uh, have the water in some part of the year like we have various water body uh, wetlands like dal lake is a water, wetland wular is a wetland hokarsar is a wetland there are n number of wetlands so these wetlands can uh, act as a buffers they can reduce or they can uh, filter the pollutants before they can uh, find it their entry into the oceans. Uh, so these were uh, some methods. How can we prevent and clean up ocean pollution? So now we are going to discuss about an important uh, topic that is a sewage treatment plant. So basically sewage treatment plant is uh, the plant where we basically uh, uh, collect the sewage water. Sewage water is the water which is generated from our homes. So that water is treated by various methods. So it is also called the domestic wastewater treatment or municipal wastewater treatment. So in which there are various methods. So it is basically the from the households or businesses, businesses particularly the hotels or restaurants or also the industrial wastewater. So here the thing is sewage treatment plant is basically meant for the uh, domestic wastewater but if it is an industrial wastewater there is slight modification in the setup and we call that a common effluent treatment plant common effluent treatment plant means various industries they set up a small uh, treatment plant based on the wastewater generated from various industries they collect it at a common point and they treat it in a common uh, treatment plant that is called common effluent treatment plant various industries like chrome plating dyeing industry automobile industry paint industry so all the wastewater generated in such industries is collected at one point where it is treated and that uh, after uh, treatment it is uh, uh, thrown back into the receiving water bodies like uh, rivers where uh, it finds its way in an ecological system. So that is called common effluent treatment plant. So depending upon what kind of the chemicals or what kind of harmful hazardous chemicals are present in the industrial wastewater, the kind of the treatment technology is uh, installed. But in case of sewage 
treatment plant, we didn't have such uh, hazardous chemicals present because uh, whatever chemicals we use, like we use soap, shampoos, or detergents at home, and besides for cleaning or bathing purpose, so most of the sewage, uh, whatever from wherever it is generated in uh, whatever country it is generated, uh, mostly they have the common parameters. So. Uh, the setup is almost same in every country, but in common effluent treatment plant setup differs from uh, depending upon the industries from the wastewater is generated. So, uh, in, in any common effluent treatment plant or sewage treatment plant, they have uh, processes by which they remove the contaminants or pollutants from the wastewater. Uh, the processes might depend on the physical, chemical, and biological, and uh, at the uh, first stage, uh, the preliminary stage, some sand, grape, uh, some paper wraps, plastic, they are removed. And then comes the primary treatment where uh, still some uh, other impurities are removed. And then secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. And then after, we can use it uh, for irrigation also. So sludge is also removed. and. Uh, the word sewage treatment plant and wastewater treatment plant they are both same if you in your examination you are asked to write a sketch a dry sketch diagram or write a various steps of a sewage treatment plant or wastewater treatment plant both uh, mean same you should not be confused at that time so this is a general sketch of a uh, sewage treatment plant for example uh, from this inlet uh, raw sewage the water which is generated at our home uh, from our toilets is uh, mm, uh, is uh, brought into a sewage plant from this inlet. So that water contains various kinds of things. It contains uh, uh, it contains a sludge like the solids present in the wastewater. It, it may contain sand also. It may contain other things also. So here is a screening bar like a sieve kind of thing where most of the big items they are removed and uh, it is then uh, transferred to the grid chamber where because of the gravity most of the sand or the sludge it gets settled by the decantation process and then then settling tank where also uh, because of uh, the gravity most of the sludge is uh, settled down in here where it is then uh, removed from the sludge digester and uh, sludge drying pad. Then this water, this all uh, includes this bar screening, grid chamber and satellite tank. This is called the primary treatment. Then in secondary treatment, what we uh, do it is aeration tank. Aeration tank means where we mix up the water with air, completely shake the water because of certain mixers. So most of uh, the organic pollutants, they are degraded here when they, uh, when they come uh, in contact with the oxygen and microorganisms, the microorganism bacteria, they degrade the organic pollutants. That's why we sh continu uh, continuously shake this uh, wastewater and it takes time here to degrade. So here also some sludge is produced, activated sludge means some microorganisms are this sludge is having some microorganisms so we mix up these microorganisms in here along with oxygen and then we uh, put it for the some period of time so that this water gets a little bit cleaner then settling tank again when this is mixed some sludge is produced because uh, of uh, the digestion then we collected this sludge that is a solid part of the wastewater we collect it in here then we transfer this water that is generated from this aeration tank. We uh, add chlorine. Chlorine is basically the microorganisms which are present in here. We kill those microorganisms so that there is no uh, bad smell or odor in the water. So we add chlorine. Chlorine is a disinfectant. Uh, then it reduces the microorganism load in the water. And uh, then we can use or we can uh, use it for irrigation purpose or we can directly uh, put 
uh, into the river or lake or ocean. But there is another process that is a tertiary process. Uh, some of the nutrients here we uh, remove some solid parts. Here we remove organic uh, pollutants. But there are some inorganic pollutants like ammonia is there, like uh, many other chemicals are there. So we also need like ammonia, phosphorus, we need to remove those kind of things. So in tertiary treatment, we remove those kind of things like we do ozone treatment, we use uh, other chemicals, chelates, so they uh, react with those kind of chemicals and we, uh, I mean, we can uh, take up uh, back those chemicals from the water and then we can also use that water for drinking purpose if the uh, parameters are very less. So these all processes, how they, how they make a sewage water uh, fit for drinking purpose, these are various stages and it takes a uh, lot of time, it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of uh, chemicals to make this uh, polluted water uh, fit for drinking purpose or irrigation purpose. So uh, when the water is, this water is uh, generated, uh, uh, it is uh, made, uh, I mean, uh, which is treated, uh, it can be uh, thrown for various uses. So it can be used for in, inland surface water, means we can gel, uh, generally uh, put it back on the surface or we can uh, put back in the sewer lines. Uh, we can use it for irrigation purpose or we can uh, draw it back to the coastal areas. So depending upon the use where we are throwing this water, there are various parameters uh, which should be uh, we should not exceed these limits. So, for example, suspended solids. If we uh, put it for the irrigation use, the suspended solids should not be more than 200 milligrams per liter or uh, 200 parts per million. So, in uh, sewer lines, it is more permissible, uh, 600. Uh, similarly, pH is also mentioned in here, oil, grease, total uh, residual chlorine, ammonical nitrogen, uh, nitrogen and uh, ammonia. These are various kinds of uh, nitrogens depending upon the processes. Ammonical nitrogen, gel, gel nitrogen. Gel is a process by which we identify how much nitrogen is present in water or soil. So ammonical nitrogen. So all these parameters, uh, they have been framed by the uh, by the Indian standards by Central Pollution Control Board. So these treatment plants are continuously monitored whether these parameters uh, are followed or not. So there are regular visits <clears throat> in such kind of treatment plants or uh, common effluent treatment plants. Besides this, uh, the important parameter is biological oxygen demand. What should be the biological oxygen demand if we put this wastewater for the irrigation use? It should not be more than 100. Chemical oxygen demand means biological oxygen demand is the capacity of microorganisms to degrade the wastewater uh, in five days. That is called uh, just set a standard at 20 degrees Celsius for five days. Chemical oxygen demand is we use potassium dichromate, a chemical which digests all the organic pollutants within a time frame. We heat it, it heat up in a laboratory. Uh, similarly, arsenic, mer mercury, what should be the permissible limits, but I guess most of the uh, most of the treatment plants, they didn't follow these kind of parameters. They let it uh, like that. Mm, they didn't treat it properly. The reason behind that is the most of the sewage treatment plants, they are overburdened. So the capacity of, uh, for example, in Srinagar, there are six treatment plants. Out of six treatment plants, only one is working properly and that two is uh, means uh, that runs over capacity that has capacity for only 30 uh, million gallons per day but the load is around 60 gallons million gallons per day so uh, uh, there is a hundred percent overburden on that uh, treatment plant so because of such overload of treating the wastewater they didn't treat the wastewater uh, completely and last one is how can we control overall the water pollution? So prevent 
groundwater contamination as i discussed earlier what are the various ways how can we reduce the groundwater contamination and then reduce the non point sources non point sources are the agriculture runoff storm water which basically contribute pesticides and fertilizer pollutant into the water bodies and uh, then uh, reuse treated waste water for irrigation which i was saying it can be used for the irrigation purpose if the parameters are within the limits so we should uh, be using the uh, waste water for irrigation purpose so that the fresh water can be saved because 80% of the fresh water in india is used for irrigation so waste water generation uh, is also uh, very high so if we can use the waste water for the irrigation purpose uh, we can reduce the use of fresh water for the irrigation and uh, substitutes for the toxic and pollutants like uh, we use pesticides we can go for the organic pesticides uh treatment of the sewage uh, reuse reduce and recycle it uh, happens uh, it is uh, applicable for water and other uh, things also we uh, which we use in day to day life reduce uh, resource waste reduce air pollution how an air pollution is uh, related with the water pollution as you see uh, if some of the pollutants they increase in the uh, air like lead uh, nitrate sulfate they find their way into the water bodies by the rain water so uh, if we reduce such kind of pollutants in here we can also reduce the waste uh, we can also reduce the water pollution reduce the poverty poverty uh, is basically uh, related to the clean uh, water availability and sanitation so it is also related if the any population in any country the population is very high so the load on natural resources like water is very high particularly in the cities mega cities like delhi mumbai where the population is very high so the load on the water resources is very high and the waste generation is also very high that can lead to the water pollution and uh, importantly compliance with the water laws 1972 uh, uh, 1974 the uh, water pollution and control act 1974 which has been uh, brought into the constitution of india that can uh, they have uh, various amendments and if all the uh, laws are com- uh, applied that is for industry or domestic purpose uh, use of water so we can uh, definitely reduce the pollution and uh, besides uh, this fertilizers which we use we should go for the manures or farmyard manures or compost uh, instead of going for the organic pollutants we should minimize use of pesticides uh, we should never use pesticides uh, in the fields which is near by the water bodies so that you can find easy way into the uh, uh, like our water bodies like lakes and rivers compost food waste whatever kitchen waste or the extra food uh, which we uh, have at home we can easily convert into the fertilizers by the composting so use uh, do not use water fresheners in um, toilets like that also pose uh, an extra cost in treating such kind of waters so uh, in japan they also use like they install uh, sinks where we can wash hands upon the flush tanks of the toilets so that the water that is used for the washing it is stored in the, the flush tank and that can be used for flushing the toilets so that's also a conservative methods uh, we can go for the dry toilets but it is uh, uh, like uh, we are depending about the faith we are uh, very closely uh, related uh, we are using water for our uh, evolution so the using the dry toilets is not an option for some community co- some communities besides uh, we uh, use pesticides paints solvents and refuses products which directly find their way into the groundwater that should be reduced so this all